Hi everyone and welcome to Over the Rainbow Show with your host Bob Brown on Wednesday the 2nd of May at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, 1 o'clock Pacific Time and 9 o'clock UK Time and to all the listeners from around the world you can go to Beacon of Light Radio chat on Facebook or you can sky me at Beacon Light Radio. Well we're a fantastic show we have to today or tonight wherever you are around the world a fantastic guest, Robert Van De Broek. Robert had a face-to-face -face meeting with an ET and he gave him some artifacts to prove that he'd, he'd been in contact. He also takes pictures of dead people and UFOs at will. Can we please welcome Robert to the show? Hello, Robert. Hello. Nice on uh, nice that I can uh, that we can uh, come on your show. Uh, thank you, Bob. And uh, uh, I, I thank you that other lady. I forgot her name. So sorry, Jennifer. Jennifer thank you, Jennifer, that you uh, are uh, in the in the program. Uh, that I can come in your program. That's the way I must say it. Yes, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, I'll, you know, from an early age. Can you just give us a brief outline of what happened to you when you were growing up? Yes. I was growing up in uh, Hoeven, that's a little village between Rosendaal and Breda. It's in the Netherlands. It's, um, yeah, a an, an, uh, small country. I was born in the hospital in Breda, then they was bring me uh, to Hoeven, where my parents was living. And then I have two sisters, one older, one younger. And I was, uh, yeah, growing up as a normal kid, but uh, I was seeing things, and I was think and expecting that everybody was see that, but... Yeah, I was discovered that uh, that it was not uh, true that other children was not see that most all the time, and I remember me when my parents was bring me to my bed that I was uh, see uh, figures coming around my bed, sometimes creatures, sometimes dead people, sometimes the ca the room, uh, the sleep room was filled with light, and um, sometimes I was see angels and color patterns around people and animals and trees and i was expected everybody was see that to the moment that i was playing with an other kid uh, out the street uh, i was a friend for me and i was say to him look in the in the stairway from the door there is an uh, is an uh, on the on the in the doorway is standing an um, a man and he was saying i see nothing and then i was coming on the point you know, but there is standing somebody, and then I was starting to be a little bit afraid that something was wrong in my mind. And then my parents was going with me to uh, from classic to classic locates in uh, the mental care, uh, um, the mental health care uh, association, and the, they was trying to find uh, psychiatric help uh, and and everything for me and. The people will say there, uh, yeah, that they was thinking that I was crazy, that I was, uh, yeah, maybe psychotic. And then there was, uh, I was go uh, to a special school and everything, and they was uh, think that uh, I was crazy. And uh, then there was decide to uh, bring me to a psychiatric institute. My parents was not decided, but the helpers, the mental helpers, will say, yeah. But spirits don't exist, and ghosts don't exist. He is uh, mentally ill. He uh, must go to a uh, psychiatric institute. And then, um, yeah, my parents was bring me there, and that was very frustrating for me. I get uh, was having a lots of anxiety. I remember me when I was uh, 12 years old, and I was living uh, still at home. I uh, was coming out the shower, and uh, I was see uh, an apparition in the hall from uh, the house, an apparition from uh, the Virgin Mary. And I was shocked about it, uh, that uh, uh, my parents was not see that, and I was see it. And mm. I was tell it, I was tell it my father, and 
uh, he was saying, no, that's not possible. And um, yeah, then uh, I was afraid. I was lost my consciousness. And uh, then I was coming uh, back with my consciousness. I was, uh, on that moment, I was for a couple of maybe minutes, I was blind. I was see nothing. And uh, then I was starting to see again. And my... Um, Parents was go with me to a psychiatric institute and it was give me a lots of medicines. And then then they was decide he must go to a psychiatric instit- institute that I must go there and must stay there and sleep there. That was terrible for me when I was, uh, yeah, uh, get anxiety when I must sleep on other places. And then I was 13 years old, 12, 13 years old, uh, 14. And then they was bring me there and it was uh, terrible for my parents, but also for me. And when I was sitting there almost a year, then a nurse will say, you are not crazy, but you are gifted. And yeah, then uh, I was uh, not one to hear that. Uh, I was uh, think, uh, you know, it's uh, I will not uh, that people see me as a uh, magical uh, wizard. I will be normal. And the only thing that I wa- was willing that I was wanted was that I can be a normal kid. And uh, but something in myself was say, see, speak the truth. It's true what she is saying. I was getting immediately and instantly knowing. And then, uh, yeah, I was, uh, my parents was go to uh, Nijmegen. They was go to a, to, um, uh, a man that uh, is very gifted. They was hearing from him. And um, he was helping me uh, through a picture uh, when I was sitting on the institute. Uh, my parents was not tell the mental helpers that they was go to him. And he was very gifted. And he was tr- he was also a medium and he was starting to help me through a picture and I was feeling the moment when he was helping me um, that he was helping me or in a distance and my parents was not tell how late he was go there and then I was feeling a distance exactly the time when he was do it and that was right and then he was close my gifts in a distance a little bit that I can be a normal puber a normal kid and then uh, the helpers in the institute was thinking that I was better that I was get healed and uh, they will say, give it a try, let them go back to association. And then I was come back at home. And then I think to the moment that I was 15, 16 years old, it was stay quiet and I can do normal things. And then uh, when I was 16 years old, my gifts was coming uh, back in the form from crop circles that I was get uh, very strong the feeling that I must go to a nature place. And uh, then, then I was driving there on my bike and I was watching to... Um, Would they the... appear then, Robert? On that moment, uh, I was uh, go with my bike. I was get the feeling you must go to nature. I was feeling big, intense, all, yeah, all, you, you know, sort of... As of the universe was coming around me, it was I was feel so deep love and unconditional love that I was feel I must go to the nature place and I was feel God very strong around me uh, or the source, how you will call it, and then I would go there. And then my intention was sucked to uh, the right and I was seeing a light bulb that was making a sort of spiral in the air and it was disappear behind the dike and uh, when i was uh, going with my bike on the dike the light bulb was disappear but uh, in the field i was discover uh, three beautiful circles and the uh, the circles was still uh, the the grass in the circles was still moving and uh, you will see that 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 was just happening. That was very, um, yeah, very impressive. That was the begin of um, now 100 circles that I have discovered in uh, now 26 years since the 90s, um, since 1996, uh, where I have seen how they was forming and also that I was seeing um sometimes that there was already there when I was come there, but then I was get visions from the specific field, the street name, I was get it in my head, and then I was go there. And many times it was there. In the first uh, time, I was discover it only self, and later uh, I was discover it uh, uh, self, but I was see only self 
uh, when light bulbs was make the crop circles. But later, I was get witnesses around me, uh, like uh, Nancy Talbot, the in 2001 uh, was fly. She was flying to the Netherlands. She was the assistant from Professor Livingood in America. He was do the famous crop circle test that he was discovered that uh, the cells from the plants was changed in some real circles, and that uh, means that radiation was there, and radiation can change only cells. And uh, she was um, that proves that the circles are real. But she was hearing from me, and then she was flying to the Netherlands to meet me in 2001, and. Then she was talking with me and she was asking me, can you do a prayer to ask the higher souls what can maybe more directly. I've never ever seen that, I was never ever seeing that a crop circle was forming. And I was say, okay, I can do that, but I cannot promise it what the other world will decide or it is good or not good. I'm not a boss, I'm just an instrument. So I was ask her, ask the higher source if they will do it. And... Then she was say, I'm going to my bed, I'm tired, it was in the night, and then um, I was close the doors, locked the doors, and I was, I was decide I will also go to bed, and so I will stay in the kitchen, and then uh, I was get goosebumps over my whole body, and I was hearing uh, that the cows was making noise outside uh, in the fields, and I was feel that something was happening. Just I was turn the light out. I was make it dark and dark. And um, <clears throat> from the one to the other second, in three seconds times, there was a big beam of light shooting down behind uh, the house from my parents where I was living then, in the fields, in a bean bean fields behind this house, three four times. And then I was uh, hearing uh, upstairs uh, that uh, Nancy was running downstairs she was saying have you seen that if you see that and she was standing then by me and we was watching out the window and we will see that a big um, uh, beam of light was uh, coming down yeah. and uh, was falling in the fields again and again and again and we will see that uh, that the the plants was f going down flat on the ground and we was discovering beautiful circle in a bean field, and uh, that was the that I was happy that she was uh, see that, and yeah, now this week, last week, and uh, other witness Johnny Webb was here. He was never ever see how a crop circle was forming, and he have seen it now also with me that a crop circle was out of the blue. He was not expected was forming right for his face. It is, um, you know. It does it still uh, when you when you see things like that? Are you still amazed by it? Yes, yes, yes. It it's not normal. You? Are you ever afraid? No, no, not not no. It's all the time that I uh, know that it is uh, what the things that are going on uh, around me. They are only love. It's only very sweet and uh, loving what's going on. Yeah. It's uh, it's coming to have a lot to do with what people call God of the source. It's uh, it's the power that is standing above all the star constellations and all what the did Nancy universe. What about it then, Nancy Talbot? She was amazed uh, from that she was see how a crop circle was uh, forming. She was very happy with it and uh, she was, uh, she tell give testimony from it on uh, conferences, on lectures and interviews. And she uh, have done a lot of scientific proofs with me, also with Professor Dr. Roll. He was a uh, parapsychological researcher. He was very skeptical. He was also a mask, a couple of mediums. But he was uh, wishing to, to test me, and he was test the photographic, photokinetic gift for me. Uh, you know, when I make pictures, I take your camera, and you're standing and watching it. I, uh, you have a chance that when I make pictures that dead relatives from you are, appear on the picture or uh, extraterrestrials. And she uh, was organizing the scientific research to it. And uh, uh, Dr. Roll was visiting me in 2008 and uh, he was doing uh, lots of critical tests with me, uh, with his cameras and with different cameras from him. And he was uh, do the chip uh, in it. And uh, he was uh, and uh, that people and extraterrestrials was appearing on the picture. And he have given official explanation uh, after it that he was not seeing a signal from fraud. And he was uh, and that it uh, he must conclude that it is real. And later, Dan Drayson. 
she was Nancy Talbot was organized. Uh, Dan Drayson, he's a uh, filmmaker, and he was uh, testing me under strict conditions. Um, and they was testing me that they was give me a camera. Uh, they were standing by it, and uh, they was filming the lens, and they was filming uh, the camera from behind, uh, from my shoulders, and um, they let me know one moment lonely. They was uh, uh, buy a new camera, and they was uh, plug the chip in, and then they was filming me and was making pictures. They call it the close box. That there is no way that I can escape, or that I can use trickery. And then Frederick Jorgensen was a peer on the camera, and uh, that was somebody that was very special for Dan Drayson. Uh, Frederick Jorgensen was uh, the founder from uh, White Noise, from the EVP, and he had uh, developed that, and um, he was uh, a peer on the camera, and that was a scientific proof on that moment on the strict conditions that shows um, that that it is real and that uh, communication uh, um, with true mediumship on the camera is uh, is possible and that and it was proved that I was not that I'm not a charlatan yeah exactly tell us about Eisenhower yes that uh, mm, that was amazing um, that was in 2016, I think so. And on that moment, uh, I was feeling presence coming around me. I was get the feeling that I must make uh, pictures. And then Eisenhower was coming on the picture. And um, he is strong connected with uh, extraterrestrials. And uh, there is a story that he was meet an extraterrestrial when he was living on this uh, planet, when he was living. But uh, he was given the message that he from out uh, that he is uh, working from out the afterlife, also with extraterrestrials, and that he, um, yeah, that he have uh, that he will give the message that uh, some star, there's some mystical star that astronomers have discovered, um, where uh, the mother star, the sun, is sometimes uh, go uh, blinded, that 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 they not can see the mother star more. There is something very big coming uh, f for before a big star, some some shape or some some form, and uh, that they can see through the telescopes. Uh, the star not almost not. Uh, there is something big that's uh, flying around it, and the star they call it uh, key. Um, Key Y C, key uh, something like that, and then numbers behind it. I don't remember me exactly, but there are some astron astronomers. They think they have the theory that they have maybe uh, that maybe in some very intelligent uh, aliens live there that uh, have built a sort of big city around the sun there and around the planets there, and um, uh, they are different astronomers. They think maybe that's happening there are some other astronomers they think it's maybe a very big cloud with dust but they not really think that that is is, is the the true it's it's too big to to be a cloud with dust and eisenhower was giving me the message yes there there is life and it's a very intelligent uh, they are very intelligent life forms and they will discover more so that was a very special message and that eisenhower is also working in the planetary program from planet earth to create disclosure so that's uh, that was a very nice message i was very thankful for that message he was appear on the camera on the picture and you can see that also on facebook and on the website so how long you been taking photos then since 2004 yeah then i was discovered on one night that i was uh, get a feeling that something was around me i was living still at, uh, by my parents and i was hearing the noise like a float very high you know very um, or a little bit of noise from grasshoppers. It was uh, grasshoppers, you know. It was very sharp, high uh, noise. 
And then uh, I was get the drift to make pictures. And then I was making pictures from a green chair that was standing there. And I was also see with my naked eyes that some sort of cloud, energy cloud was uh, in the chair there. And I was making pictures. And after when I was watching back, you will see first the clouds. Then you will see that the cloud was get a form from a sort of classical alien gray. And then uh, the the big uh, ice was appearing, and then you were sitting, seeing that there was almost sitting a an, uh, an, an creature, an, an, a physical creature in um, in the chair. And then more and more people uh, was hearing from it, and they was asking, "Will you make pictures?" And they was coming with cameras, and then I was making pictures. And sometimes dead relatives was appear on the camera. Sometimes creatures, sometimes angels. Uh, my dead uncle was coming on the camera. My grandmother was coming on the camera. And then some journalist was asked if he can write an article for the newspaper, and he was bringing his camera. And then also uh, creatures was appear on the camera. And, what kind uh, of creatures were appearing on the camera? Sometimes white creatures. Sometimes um, they was having um, they was show um, green. Sometimes yellow. Sometimes red. I have uh, sometimes gold. I was gotten lots of types on my. Um, on my camera sometimes there was hairy uh, sometimes creatures you cannot imagine uh, it was very very interesting uh, fascinating what was happening there yes it was uh, and also dead relatives sometimes also only um, plasma vortex uh, plasma vortex forms um, sometimes symbols was appear on the pictures sometimes a cross or a pyramid uh, or a beautiful white um, how you say that uh, unicorn was uh, coming on the picture it sounds sounds romantic but it was really happening uh, oh. with the cam with the camera from a tourist that was visit uh, a crop circle and she was asking can you make a picture so yes of course hey. Can you tell us about what the aliens left you? Some artifacts? Yes, it was an experience from 2015. It was a normal day and a normal night. And uh, yeah, I was get the drift to go outside. And I was not get specific feeling that what I, you know, I was not get specific feeling that I was that I having sometimes when a crop circle is happening, you know, then I get a restless feeling before. I was get more the drift, I will get fresh air. I will out my house. So I was take my motorbike and I was go to Breda Airport. That's an uh, airfield in uh, my village, Bossenhoofd. And when I was driving to there, I was see a light hovering in the sky and I was thinking first maybe it's a helicopter. But then I was driving more closer to the airfield and I was feeling that the light was having consciousness. Then I was following the light and I was coming by a grass field and I was see that the light was hovering above, was hanging above the field and it was an egg-shaped light. It was white, blue, a little bit yellow. And it was maybe the shape so big as a car. And uh, then I was parked my motorbike. I was walking in the field. And when I was walking in the field, I was feel, I still remember it's very strong. I was feel this unconditional love coming on my body over me, total over me. And um, two lights, light bulbs, little orbs was coming out of the egg shape. They were starting to spinning. Then a sort of liquid milk white type or plasma was coming out it and it was formed in body one taller body one little body and a sort of great type head and uh, on the body was i was seeing that octopus arms was sitting there like tentacles tentacles was coming out of the body and I was a little bit shocked from it, and you know I have uh, a little bit bacterial phobia my whole life. I wash my hands uh, many times, and uh, yeah, I shame myself a little bit for it. But it's it's uh, yeah a little bit a problem for me. And um, then I want, on that moment I was thinking, oh, you know, this creatures coming 
maybe from an other biotope, from out an other galaxy, an other solar system. They are other, other bacterials. They have maybe other viruses. And when you go to Asia, Asia, you must get shots. Because I was afraid. I was thinking, oh, maybe I was starting to be really sick. And I was also smelling fish, serious fish I was smelling when they were standing right before me. Then I was feeling god coming around me i was feeling that the power that i've created everything was coming around me and was tell me i was feeling tell uh, he was telling me don't be afraid nothing will happening to you you have protection then i was feel that the taller creature will shake my hand with his tentacle and then i was point my hand out and it was a very emotional moment he was curling his tentacle around my fingers around my hand and it was feel so emotional so deep so so it was feels a little bit the same when you have a little kitten in your arm or a little baby it was feel so pure like almost a sort of cosmic baby consciousness but then in a very growing up adult powerful way you know uh, you was feel it was feel amazing and then I must get the message. We will prepare the humanity through you um, for disclosure. We will prepare people uh, on the fact that we look different, that there are many creatures in space, they look different. And people will stop to discriminate each other. You know, white people discriminate, sometimes black people, black people, sometimes white. And that's terrible. We must stop that. When we will have contact with the whole association, when we will get the right to have communication with extraterrestrials, we must learn to grow up and to don't discriminate more. And they will tell me that I must be a bridge for them. Um, then I have, uh, then I was get a message. We will give you something, and I was expect maybe a stone or something. Mm -hmm. But they was then I was feel that the moment was coming from goodbye that they must leave, and it was very painful for me when I was having the wish on that moment that I can go with him, you know, with them, with them. Uh, it was feel so sad in some way, you know. The, this earth is a very heavy planet, but I was feel now I have a job to do. I must stay here. And then uh, there was coming a sort of same liquid light around the bodies from the creatures. And uh, then there was coming sort of light over them, spinning again very fast. And I was see that the two creatures was levitating from the ground. And then I was hearing tap, 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 tap. And I was see that this tentacles was dropped on the ground, falling from the, from the bodies. And I was asked telepathic in my head, is everything go okay uh, with the dematerialization? Uh, I'm, I'm afraid that I'm watching now a cosmic dematerialization accident, uh, the same like uh, the Philadelphia experiment. And then I was getting my head, no, don't make yourself worries. They will grow back. This is what we will give you as a physical evidence that extraterrestrials exist. And uh, they was tell me they will grow back. And that was make me happy when I was hearing that. And then the they was transformed the two creatures in a light bulb again, in two orbs. They were shooting in the egg shape. Then the, then the egg shape was uh, still hovering there, and I was uh, watching it, and then the egg shape was not fly away, but it was zapped away, like you turn a television screen out. Um, and then I was get, uh, then I was knowing, now I must take the tentacles from the ground, and I was do it, and I was remember me that I have a plastic package in my uh, motorbike and I was take so many as I can and then I was asked in my mind are I having I have I have I now all the tentacles and I was getting my head yes then I was drive back to my home I was take a, a, a piece of plastic 
black plastic was uh, layered down on the ground and I was laid down the octopus arms there, the tentacles, and I was making pictures from it. That was the first thing that I was think that I must do. But I was not know what the bacterials will do from this planet when they uh, come in touch with the tentacles. You know, maybe it will rotten, go rotten, uh, rotten uh, quick. And uh, then I was um, uh, think, what is now the best that I can do? And I was thinking, yeah, put them in the, bring them in the freezer. And then I was in the freezer, uh, sorry, in the freezer. Yeah. And then uh, I was uh, do them in plastic uh, packets and then diff- uh, separate. And then I was uh, bring them in the freezer. And um, then I was asked on my Facebook or scientists have interest in it. And they was, uh, nobody was react. And it was very painful to discover that the scientific world was thinking, yeah, you know, this man make us, makes it up, he's a liar. And um, then I was, keep it in the freezer. And then now after, uh, yeah, since 2015, it is there. And now I'm happy that Johnny Webb was visit the Netherlands and will take uh, a sample from it and bring it to a lab uh, in um, England or in Germany. Yeah. And they will uh, do a scientific DNA test with it, but also other tests that they can see, a sort of biotope test, they call it, that they discover, uh, or it is extraterrestrial, or they discover that uh, there are things in it uh, they don't know. This I, uh, I'm very... Uh, Excited uh, about it, yes. And Johnny Webb is also on, I think so. In the yes, yes, yeah, program. Uh, yeah. Uh, he was going to come on to validate things what he's been seeing with you since he's been over. Um, yes, yes, maybe. It, I think he can he's tell... a, he's amazed by what he's seen. You know, the yes. little time he's been over, he just yeah. can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. He was coming a, li- a little bit skeptical, and he was uh, come to the Netherlands a little bit skeptical. But uh, you have discovered now, uh, yeah, that it is real, and that makes me very happy. You know, it is so easy for people they say in the, to say in a distance, you know, uh, he's a charlatan. But when they meet me, they know that it is real. And maybe Johnny can tell self something. I don't know if he is on. Yeah, we'll get him on in a minute. Um, but you can call up UFOs as well. That's true, yes, yes. I have discovered when I ask uh, the higher source uh, or they will come, that they sometimes also come and appear in uh, in the air. And uh, last summer there was a uh, journalist was asking, asking me, uh, Netherlands uh, journalist from the Netherlands, was asked if he can come to the, or he can come to me uh, to uh, have a talk with me and tape it about uh, uh, the things that are going on around me. And they was not, uh, he was not planning and I was not planning to summon a GFO to uh, call them up. As so we was walking outside by the fields and I was give an interview about uh, what's happening there and the crop circles and how long they are there. And then he was asked spontaneously, can you ask, can you call up a GFO for me? And I was do that. I was say, I cannot promise if they come, but when they decide that it's good, it will happen. And uh, then I was doing a prayer and I was asked it, or they will come. Uh, and for the bigger goal to see people that you are not alone, that there is hope for the world, uh, that there is life after the dead, that life is not an accident, and uh, that extraterrestrials exist, and that they will help us. And then I, when I was doing the prayer, um, light bulbs was appearing right above us in uh, the blue, beautiful blue sky, light bulbs that uh, was flying over us and sometimes uh, yeah circulate uh, above us it, it was amazing and he was taped he was filming it and uh, that was making me very happy that uh, he was filming it and, uh, otherwise yeah some people some skeptics say um, that I'm uh, yeah a tricker that I fake oh yes you get that, sometimes you get that all the time Robert you know, yes. it's because 
Um, you can do things, but a, a lot of people can't. You can be in touch with aliens and you think, oh, what a load of rubbish that is. But, you know, you've yeah. had Nancy Talbot around you. You've had lots of people filming you. Yeah. Who are ind very independent people. And they find it, they just can't believe what's happening. You know, yeah. you, you've got to be there, the side here, to see this happen. Uh, yeah, and Johnny, absolutely. Johnny's been there and he's told me himself, he said, it's just blown my mind away how things happen around him. Yeah. There's no trickery, no nothing. What he, what you get is what you see from him. Yes, he's a exactly. very, um, you know, he do not brag about things. He's very modest in what he does. Yeah, what he does say, you know, uh, he's a genuine guy. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm a normal, grounded uh, person. Uh, I, I not. Uh, some people don't expect from me when they see all this. Uh, that's a funny part from the story. Uh, lots of people expect maybe that I live as a Mormon, uh, <laughs> in, in, in you know, in a cave or something. But I, um, I'm a normal person, you know, with my teas, with uh, my laughing. And, but you uh, do normal things like normal people do. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I, uh, uh, some people expect also when they will have a friendship with me that I, that I, uh, yeah, that I philosoph, that I do um, the whole day philosophic ways and act in a philosophic way. And that's not, I, I don't like, in my private life to talk about my gifts a lot i like more to have than grounded people around me that i can make fun with them that i can be good that i can be goofy that uh, but some <laughs> people yeah but some people don't accept that and they leave me then they want yeah, well, so got, badly yeah so i have an interest what you want to do in life like you say yeah. we we all like a bit of fun we, we, we don't want to be doing this all the time, 24 hours a day. You're yes. just, just a normal man who goes about yeah. his business every day. Exactly. And that's yeah. what, what everybody loves you, what it's all about. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, yeah. That's, uh, but I, uh, I have these gifts and I thank God for it that I can help people and when uh, God has guided me to some situations of people or I must do things uh, then uh, yeah, I have also um, get uh, the message that it is good that, that it's come out to people to give sometimes a lecture or give an interview or radio talk that people can learn from it that people can be insp get inspiration from it. And, so you're and giving grow. information from the aliens to us down here to, to say, do not be frightened. You know, yes, yes. love it to it, you know. Yes, yeah, that's true. That's the whole uh, the whole point that uh, anxiety must go away. They are also, yeah, in the past, uh, movie makers uh, was sometimes also make very um, uh, scary movies of course uh science fiction movies about aliens uh, that will start a war and everything yeah then uh, that makes people afraid of course but it's not what they want it's totally different do you think we'll get disclosure this century then i yeah uh, i think that it is good possible yeah i i expect that we get disclosure this century yes yeah we'll get we'll get um i'll get jennifer to get to get Johnny on in a minute. Uh, when when Jennifer's ready, we'll get Johnny on. Uh, just to clarify a few things, um, like you say, what you've done, and, and he can tell us what he's seen as well about you. Yeah. Yes. He's on now, I think. Good evening. Hello. Hello, my friend. How are Hi, you, Johnny? Hi, Hi, Robert. Hello. Yeah. yeah. We're just talking uh, about his validation, and I said we'll get Johnny on because he's been there for a couple of weeks and he's been monitoring you, filming you, and you know it's exactly. nice to have a, another opinion to what he's seen. 
yes, I think that it is very good uh, to let him tell, you know, that uh, people see that I'm not promoting myself or make things self up to uh, to make stories bigger. He can, uh, you know, he can tell how I am. Uh, uh, how he experienced me, that I'm not a liar and everything. But people can tell it better than I'm self, you know, than it looks <laughs> like, oh, I make things up and I uh, I have a fantasy syndrome. <laughs> they can think, and uh, when another person, you know, a, a neutral person, a neutral person is coming and tells what he has seen, I think that's the best witness. I do as well. Now that Johnny. You've been with him for, is it a week or two? Uh, week, what yeah. can you tell us about Robert? Okay, well, for me, what happened was, is I was a co-host to Dr. J Radio Live, and we had Nancy Talbot come on a couple of years ago talking about seriology crop circles, and she explained how she'd also been living with Robert in Holland and would visit him a couple of times a year for the past 20 years and that she'd had this phenomenon that was going on, um, not just the experience of herself witnessing a crop circle uh, whilst being in his presence, but obviously the phenomenon with photographs and her brother appearing on several photographs, her brother being dead at the time. Um, so there was quite a bit of phenomenon going on there, um, but it was collated and reported and, you know, written down and documented and videoed and DVD'd and, you know, as time and, you know, products increased in production, so did the technology of recording all of this stuff. So he has, you know, ancient recordings plus up to high day for this date of today. Um, but when I arrived, you know, I was more interested in what we discussed the last time he was on our show, and that was that he'd been in the... Um, an experience where at the bottom of the field at, at the Bremen Breda Airport, he bear witness to an egg in the sky that called him to come to this field and two smaller balls of plasma came down and two tentacled beings, he described them as little as aliens. They looked like greys, but they had tentacles on their chest and back. And obviously he'd had a communication telepathically with them, made a physical contact and then they left and they said they'd leave him a some form of uh, proof that they were real and uh, there would be properties for humanity. He says that some tentacles had landed on the ground and he picked them up and collected them in a black plastic bag that was on the back of his bike and he took them home and he reported them on the end of September and journalists in London from the Metro magazine uh, had seen the photograph that he'd taken and made the documentation and story of it. He was a bit sceptical in their report but rightly so. Now, I'd seen that on a tube. I don't normally get on the subway in London. I normally drive my car, but I knew I was going up to the city of London and I knew that it'd be a nightmare to park. So I got a subway that one day on the Northern Line. And I was on the train and I picked up the local rag called the Metro and there was this story. And I remember reading it and thinking it sounds a bit wild, but you know, with this day and age and what goes on in the world, um, I didn't put it down as completely fake, but I thought it was a, you know, a wild story, needed further investigation, but never did I think for a second it was Robert Vandenbroek. Anyway, um, a year or so went by, Nancy comes on our show, she tells us about Robert, so we asked her if she could come back on the show and bring Robert with her, and that's what she did, and Robert came on and talked about his mediumship and how he started and all of the things that have gone on. Um, but at the time on the show, he never mentioned the tentacled beings. It was only in the after show that we were talking to him when he, this came about and apparent. So I thought it would be interesting if he, if he could like reveal these tentacles back to the public again and he explained that he still had them in his possession and they were, you know, dished out to a few of his friends for security, but he still had a couple in his freezer. And so I was invited to come over and test them and get them tested officially. Um, we, we were looking at marine biology to begin with, but we were told that if anything, if anyone's going to be able to test them, it's a laboratory in Munich in Germany. So I've got a Tobus, I won't mention the last name at this time, but he's uh, been, been voicemailed and that's the guy that's going to come back to us and we can physically take samples with them and get them analysed. But um, as for Holland and their, their DNA and their species testing, it's not done in-house. It's, it's shipped out abroad and one of their sites is Germany 
So mm. getting here, um, my full intention was only dealing with a tentacle being a location and tests on, on the species. As I arrived the day before, Robert has had this obviously phenomenon outside his kitchen window, which is a UFO floating over the buildings, very sort of erratically and sort of not in formation that we'd expect from normal vehicles of, that fly around us. But I looked outside the window, I looked at his video on his kitchen table, looked outside the window again, and I could see clearly there's no manipulation going on here. This is live footage. There is two clips that are pasted together. It explained to me that whilst filming the first few seconds of that first image that was in that dusk, so it was pretty clear, the, f the memory on his phone was full. So he's had to turn off the phone, take loads of what he called human pictures and situations mm -hmm. and delete it very quickly. And then when he started up again, it's a bit more darker. And so the pictures deteriorated a bit more. And he said he was able to film it for a few more seconds and then the light on the camera itself uh, screen was so dark that he could no longer see it. So he stopped filming, but he did tell me that he still felt the sensation that it was sitting out there for at least another 10 minutes after. So as I say, I've arrived here. Uh, I was due to meet him at seven o'clock in the evening, but I actually got to the local town at four in the afternoon. And it was a blazing hot sky, sunny day. We got from British weather as I'd come over, I brought it with us. And I just thought, well, I'll go to the locations that I've seen in these debates and conversations. And obviously I knew the GPS positions and Google Earth them a few times. So I was very familiar to the location. So I went straight to the back of the airport where this field was. And I remember him telling me six bushes up, about 20 foot to the left is where they actually landed and where he walked to and communicated. So I took my video camera, it was 4K, I filmed the whole area and at that point, as I record it now, there is no crop circle, but there is the trees, there is the location and a small conversation, me explaining Robert's story to it. So that evening I said to Robert, um, would, we, would you like to come with me and go back to that location and we'll film it and you can discuss to me out what it was like here in the dark and how it happened. So I pulled up directly facing the, the actual view of the of the field, or, you know, not actually level with the road, but I faced into the field with my full beam and my side lights on, and I counted one, two, three, four, five, and there's the sixth tree. And I looked at Robert and said, "Whereabouts were you exactly with that sixth tree?" Facing him, obviously doing a conversation, and then I looked back ahead in front of me to point back to the tree, and there was this crop circle. And in the time of two or three seconds, it wasn't there, and then it was there. And not only was it there, it was sort of rough cut at first. No, it wasn't actually a circle. It was starting to look a bit rough and trampled. And I said, look, Robert, it looks like it's forming a circle, a depression. And he went, yeah, Johnny, you'll see it first. It's a crop circle. And I said, yes, yeah, it's, it's a crop circle. And it literally blemished out to be a perfect circle. And I thought, this is unbelievable. I just got out of the car. I said, right, get the cameras. Let's film it. Let's film it. It was quite dark my own cameras and wasn't too good on it. Um, so I brought Robert's own camera out, which is quite an expensive camera that some people that have respected his research have bought for him and left him. And I was using that, I put it on night vision and we got some lovely shots of this circle and the location. And obviously it was still very dark and I realized it, we're not gonna get the best shots. So I said, look, Robert, I'm very excited about what's happened. I'm over the moon in fact, um, but let's go back. We'll have a cup of coffee, a cigarette, um, relax a minute, and then we'll come back in the morning when it's light. And so about uh, seven o'clock, we got back there. It was the, the skylight in the photos that you'll see. It was bright enough. It was clear. The sun was halfway up. And uh, he said to me, John, I'm getting another energy here. Quickly, give me your camera. Give me your camera. So I gave him my camera again, and he just started snapping away and snapping away. And he said, I told you, John, there's something here. Look, look, look. And he's brought me back to look at the view of the camera and there was this grey. Um, I never felt frightened when I saw it. I was quite excited really. And I was looking around to see if I could physically see it with my own eyes, but I didn't. But there was this photo bomb of an alien looking at my camera and so I zoomed in, which you do, I zoomed in and zoomed in. I could see the quality of the picture and the, the, the detail of my car and the, the high definition. But the image of this alien was absolutely immaculate as well. It was crystal clear. I'd always, in my sort of eight years of, of doing um, 
co-hosting and, and talking to different experiences and people that have had phenomena and, and you know the, the paranormal experiences I'd ask a few of them about their experiences when they are taken and when they do talk about these little greys that come and stare them in the face with their jet black eyes and they're soulless and they've got no empathy and they feel very fearful of it I was looking at this picture that was given to me in this experience and when I look at the eyes I see depth uh, I don't see black emptiness or coldness or lack of empathy or anything. This thing feels alive and it feels like it's got heart and meaning and soul. It doesn't fear me. But I'm still frightened by the experience because I bear witness to it. And I, I, I thought that it would be, you know, strange in some way if something did happen, but never really expecting something to happen. And so when this happened... And the crop circle happened. But, you know, the very first thing was, is after the day and a half of talking about the, the alien that was in his kitchen window that he was filming, I was yeah. still quite ecstatic with that. It took me about till the next evening. So I'd been there a day and the next evening. When it came to mind that you do these photo things, Robert, can you take my camera, for instance, and just maybe take a few snaps? And he went, sure. And he started snapping and snapping and snapping. And then he said, there's something here, John. And he looked. And I looked and there was my wife who was in London. And I thought, I thought you only snapped dead people. Why? She's not in any trouble, is she? And he went, no, no, are you sure that's your wife? I said, yeah, it's my wife. So I rang my wife and I, I uh, WhatsApped her and sent her the picture and said, Robert's just taken this of you here. Normally people get premonitions of Robert in their house, but now we've got you in this house. Um, <laughs> and she said, well... I have been known in my sleep, John, to go and visit my parents back in Indonesia. Um, I do visit my nan in her village, um, but I don't recall being there with Robert, but it may well have happened in my high conscious. So I left it at that, and again, I was in a, an awe of a phenomenon. He not only had this UFO, which I was able to look out of his window and see the location quite clearly, but then he'd made this, this photo of my wife. So at that point, I'd had two whammies, and I was over the moon, and realised there was a true phenomenon really going on that wasn't trickery or foul play, it was as it was on the fly. And then, as I say, when I asked him later on in the evening to recall this UFO at this field, and then we get a crop circle, and then we get this grey turn up, I mean, it's gone beyond my expectations, far beyond, you know? Tell me and, about... And, tell and me about that bell. But this is what I'm saying. At this point, I'm already far beyond my wildest expectations. And in the afternoon, I said, well, if so much is being brought to me and, and I'm asking in my higher self, Lord, if this be real and true, let it be seen. And if it's not, show me the truth. Uh, I was just getting more and more confirmation from what I call my higher self and my belief in God. Um, and then I said to Robert, you know, when... Jesus died, it took him three days to come back. And when he came back, he said, don't touch me because I've yet formed and yet been transitioned or whatever that term was. And I said, Art Bell died a couple of weeks ago on the 13th. I wondered if, if he's able to, to be in that position, you know, or is it after that three days, he's no longer able to make that communication. He went, no, John, no, much more. When they're on the other side longer, yes, they make connection. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't want to tempt fate. And obviously I respect, you know, the FRIP. Yeah. Um, but do you think it would be possible that something like that could happen? Do you think, you know, him on the other side might want to reach back? He said, it's very possible, John. Yeah, it's very possible. Well, I left it at that, thinking no more. And I didn't want to tempt fate. I didn't want to say to my higher self, God proved to me and all this. I'd, you know, I was very, very content with what's happened at that point. And like I say, we come the evening time, where we're talking, we're discussing many things. And then his friend Stan turns up, who I believe is also a medium. He's got a lot of spiritual connections, looks very psychic. I feel that he goes right through me when he's looking at me, he's reading me. Well, anyway, he's there and he's talking with me and Robert. And then Robert is looking very queasy and, and almost like he's going to faint. And I said, are you all right, Robert? And Stan, even his close friend, says, Robert, are you OK? And he went, no, I feel very dizzy. I think I'm going to faint. And then he says, but there's someone here. I said, what do you mean? He said, yes, there's a man here, John, for you. I said, a man for me? It made me feel all frightened. I thought, who's that? And he said, yes, he's got glasses. He's here for you. I said, well, I, I, who's, what's it? Film him. Have you got film it, Robert? Take photos. And he took my camera again, and Stan's got his own camera out filming Robert with my camera. 
and then I pick up the big camera and film the pair of them filming the, from the cameras on the camera to whatever they're <laughs> filming. And as I'm filming it, I start to see the first picture come through and I thought, wow, there's something there. And he's snapping and snapping and snapping and very fast snapping. So we got 14, 15 different shots. And he says, John, do you know this person? And he gives me the camera and the very first shot is a little bit fuzzy. And for, for the thought of it, I kept thinking, oh my, no, I bet it's going to be my dad. And I thought it was my dad. And when I looked at it, I thought, that's not my dad. Oh, I know that face. Fuck me. Excuse my French. That's bloody Art Bell. And I said, Robert, do you realize what you've done here? This is Art Bell. He said, John, he's here with us now. He's happy to see you. He's glad. He believes. He knows you believe. And I just got all emotional and I just started crying. And it just frightened me. Not frightened me, but the power of the Lord and the power of asking you shall receive really hit home for me, Lord. And uh, I was emotional for, for a few 10 minutes. And I was slowly looking through these pictures and I could see the quality and the clearness and the youngness of Art Bell and the, the, the essence of him feeling so happy and probably looking in his best part of his life where he felt the best and he was certainly younger. And yeah. it was very emotional for me. And as I say, I've worked in, in with Art Bell. My, my host was his producer and, you know, I spoke to him a few times and asked him questions. And he was my icon when it comes to being a radio host of, you know, oh, yeah. paranormal. So for Very him to come through, genuine uh, guy. Um, he was the best around interviewing. Yeah, he was a natural, absolute natural, perfect voice. You know, he was... If anyone wanted to aspire to be someone, it was it was to be that kind of nighttime host with a good accent that could ask good questions. And so, yeah, I, I was always in awe with him. Dr. Joe told me once, uh, you know, because I rang him and heard he was coming back and we were going to be on the show. And our show ran just before Art Bells. So we used to get a lot of guests that were coming in to tune into our, tune into our show and that meeting caused our show to get quite big. But as I say, when I first ever talked to him, I was petrified. I was all paranoid and thought, oh, you know, butterflies. And I got to ask him a couple of questions. Um, and, and then obviously Dr. J was talking to him afterwards. And I said, Dr. J, did, did he mention me? You know, that I asked him and he went, well, he actually thought, John, you were a bit of a fan and he was a bit worried about you. And I thought, oh, oh. my God, you know, I didn't hit on the right side of him. So I never bothered anymore. And I just thought, all right. Fair enough, you can't please everyone. But so what validation uh, was that for him to come through? Well, exactly. And that says to me that I think he appreciates our work and knows that we were trying to do the same stuff as him. And and that was for me, like, you know, that's another emotional thing that got touched me that he came through, you know, and it was beautiful. And again, I, I'm sorry, you know, Mrs. Art Bell and your family. I don't mean to be disrespectful to your passing. But your your partner came to us and he he shared something with us that was really part of his life experience in the radio show. And I'm honoured and I apologise if it's offensive. I mean nothing to be offensive. I'm not trying to get limelight from your husband's death, but this really is a real phenomenon. And uh, I just want you to know that, man. What were, what are you going to take away from meeting Robert now when you go back to the UK? Well, other than hours and hours of footage and communication and small stories and off-the-cuff chats uh, and obviously the photographs and the videos, um, I think it's going to take me a couple of weeks, probably a couple of months to digest this mentally and physically and understand what really happened here. Um, as I say, I'm used to phenomenon. I'm used to listening to, to guests talk about their, their experiences. and But when you're actually full-on in it yourself... Um, it's not something to take lightly, I feel. I feel quite touched by it, to be honest with you. I'm still not digested it, probably. Well, that's fine, yeah. Well, it's a big thing. And we've about come to the end of the show because we've got another show straight after this is coming on. So, um, oh, yeah. but we'll, <laughs> what we'll do again, we'll get Robert back on again sometime in the, in the near future. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, uh, Bob, for the opportunity that we uh, can share this experience. And thank you, John, for your, uh, to sh Johnny, thank you that you uh, share uh, your uh, experience, uh, what you was having in the days that you was here, and um, that you give your testimony on. That helps me really that, um, yeah, that people understand that uh, it's not fake, it's real.
That's well, I'm, I'm honoured to be here. I'm honoured to be on your show, Bob. And, and uh, hey, it's... thank you. Yes, thank you, Johnny. And uh, thank you, Robert, so much for coming on the show. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. Everybody in the chat rooms loved it as well. Um, as soon as Jennifer gets the archives up, I'll send you the archives of the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. So you can listen to it in your own time. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, we'll have to go now, unfortunately. Um, but there's another show to straight on back to back of this show now. Um, thank you to everybody in the chat room. Thank you to Jennifer, the producer of the show. Thank yeah, you, thank you, Robert. Jennifer. Yes. And thank you, Johnny, for for coming on the show as well. Welcome, uh, guys. God bless you. And good night and God bless. Bye for now. Oh, oh.